Hey guys, I know things are weird right now with half of Texas snowed in and half of, uh, and, and Sweden having the exact same stuff as Texas has, and yet we have the infrastructure for it, so it's not that bad here. Um, also, we're getting used to the cold. Uh, but I was realizing something driving after our drop off Sam this morning that uh, we are related to DC Comics versus Marvel Comics. I posted a little something of it on TikTok. Uh, but it's long, it, it's one of those great long-term arguments between Marvel and DC, just like, um, just like the Star Wars versus Star Trek thing, um, where you just, you kind of have these nerd debates and, you know, it's, while we have enough media now to where we can say definitively, Okay, Marvel's way better at movies, but DC's better at animated shows and honestly TV shows too. It the question is kind of why people prefer what they prefer, and I'm tempted to write a report on it. And I might it I, I just have a hypothesis, it may well be wrong. But I was thinking about it and I was thinking about trauma and how people tie their you know, who read there are lots of people who read on a singular level and there are lots of people who read on deeper levels. So, you know, some people might read Moby Dick and it's just a story about this guy hunting whale. Why in God's name they would choose to read Moby Dick without understanding his metaphorical value, I don't know. But, no, the uh, you have that. But I think that Marvel and DC are more specifically about characters and trauma. And Marvel has often been described as character-driven, and DC has often been described as event-driven. So, in DC, things happen, characters respond to those things. In Marvel, things happen because the characters do things or are affected by things, and you're usually more focused on the character. Uh, kind of like the difference between uh, Star Wars and Star Trek. Um, anyway... So in DC, uh, you have these characters that are generally, their weaknesses are kind of tacked on at the end, whereas in Marvel, their weaknesses are kind of what makes them that character. So in DC, you know, you have Superman, but then, oh yeah, he's got kryptonite, and oh yeah, there's magic. Those two things don't actually have very much to do with who he is, whereas some of the most popular characters in uh Marvel are, for example, Wolverine. Wolverine is not a good fighter. That comes up regularly. Uh, he is brutal. He is rage-filled. He can't die. But that's really the only reason that he wins a lot of fights is that he can't die. He fights people way stronger and much better at fighting than him regularly and loses. But it's... It's one of those things where that's a part of his character. That's who he is. And so I, I kind of think, and this is just a hypothesis, I could be wrong, I'm interested in you telling me if I'm wrong, that the kind of people who are more inclined to read Marvel comics or like Marvel comics, aside from being more normal these days because of the whole MCU, but the kind of people who are more inclined to in enjoy the characters in Marvel comics are people who are aware of their trauma and or who are aware of how trauma works now when i lived in texas i would say that's most people uh, but i also had kind of a limited experience because i only taught in really really poor places and i only lived in really really poor places for the most part and most people i didn't know very many people who had the overwhelming privilege that is just kind of commonplace here in sweden even among americans who live in sweden because they were rich when they were in america or they wouldn't be in sweden Sam and I kind of leaped off a cliff when we came over here, but most people, they don't work without a net. Most people, they go, they have a, a support net of their family and they have savings and all this other stuff. Whereas Sam and I just kind of went, Poo. so, um, the, I think that people who are aware of trauma and you don't have to have experienced trauma to have it, to be aware of it and to understand it. I think people who are aware of trauma are more interested in the character-driven stories where the trauma is part of the character. Because characters in, D in Marvel have character continuity. I'm going to call it that. 
uh, because the characters are kind of built on their mistakes and built on their uh, hurt. So Spider-Man, the reason that he's a superhero is because he failed once. And he he could have done right, and it still bothers him. And it still comes up pretty regularly, and not in a justification kind of way. There's a big difference between you, both Batman and Spider-Man have trauma at their center. That's why they do what they do. But Spider-Man deals with it pretty, pretty much more regularly. And Spider-Man changes over time. You can actually see distinct differences where Spider-Man has learned something and changed as a person. Except in the, the periodical comic strips, which I don't think anybody who is watching YouTube is probably going to read. So, DC and, and Marvel, DC has event continuity. People remember when things happened and this happened this time and stuff like that. But for the most part, from one story arc to another, the characters don't change much. Every now and then you'll have a character who dramatically changes, like your Oliver Queens or your uh, Harley Quinns or something like that, where they'll actually be a different, better, more developed character later on. But for the most part, the characters are at least recognizable from where they started. Your, your Superman and your Batman haven't really changed that much. Uh, I mean, they're, they're different, but it's also a different time. It's more just that they're the same character by, uh, seen by different people. Whereas there are genuine things that have changed about Marvel characters. The, the characters are different than they used to be. They've grown. And even when they go back and pull, and, and there was a really great storyline where they went back and pulled the original X-Men into the future and you got to see how different they are and you got to see how much they changed and how much they'd been affected and how weird it was. So even though Batman goes from the beginning of the universe to the end and hops around in time and dodges magical bullets and all that sort of stuff, he is still Batman all the time and still kind of the same. He never really changes or grows. And so that's part of what I'm looking at in my competent man thing is because Batman is actually, I've realized, a perfect example of a competent man. He doesn't need to change. He doesn't need to grow. He's already perfect. He just needs to deal with stuff. So, but, but I believe, given the people that I know and the experiences that I've had, that most of the people that I know are kind of damaged and therefore end up reading and being more comfortable with the Marvel comics. Uh, and because the, the characters are, they react in a way that seems more natural true trauma. They react in a way where you can kind of understand, you know, uh, and, and there's additional trauma. You, you see a lot of the comorbidities of trauma on them. You know, when you see somebody who is like Batman, who is basically a sociopath in Marvel, He's actually a sociopath and has voices in his head and is crazy. And his name is Moon Knight. So Batman kind of just doesn't make sense to people who've experienced a lot of trauma because, and, and understand it. That's the other thing. There are lots of people who probably read DC who have had trauma, but don't really get it. They don't really understand why their trauma is still going or whose fault it is. Or even necessarily recognize that they may have some hand in their own trauma. So a lot of people who are less aware of how trauma works, uh, even if they've had trauma, probably perfectly happy enjoying your, your DC comics. And, and that's not to say that you can't enjoy both. It's more to say that the level of nerdery you can deep into is not necessarily, uh, you're not necessarily going to enjoy characters from Marvel if you don't understand. Like, for example, I'll give you an a very specific example. For the... One of the best things that Marvel phases 1 through 4 or 1 through 3 or whatever did was watching Tony Stark descend into this PTSD hell. Uh, 
it, it starts with the first time he goes through, he's planning to sacrifice himself to stop the aliens by dragging the atom bomb up through the hole. After that, you kind of watch the symptoms of PTSD just start accruing. And, you know, he's trying to talk to people and they're not listening and he's react. He's freezing up. He's having issues. He builds more and more suits of armor because he's going to try to protect himself. Then he realizes that's unhealthy. He discards that. He, but he can't stay away from it. It's, it's a per, it's a classic example of, of how to deal with PTSD. And he, he's not a god. He's not a soldier. He's not, you know, a rage monster. He's a normal person who is admittedly very smart, but the it was just masterful how they covered his PTSD over the course of like five or six movies. Finds out that his best friend's more willing to protect his friend, even though that guy killed his mom, you know, and he's constantly being reminded of the price of his thing. He meets that lady who's talking about her son and he's a normal person. And that was... When he was created, Iron Man was created as a character. Stan Lee was like, I'm going to take it. He basically did the uh, Stephen Skull Challenge. I'm going to take the least likable person I can, I, I can and make him into a hero. And that's kind of the apocryphal story of how Stan Lee decided to make Iron Man. So basically what you're looking at is trauma. And you get to see it unfold over the course of... And, of course, it comes to its logical end when he does sacrifice himself for everybody. And so it's one of those things where... Spoilers. <laughs> uh, where he... He goes through all this stuff, and that's absolutely necessary to his character. And they tried to put some of that into the Batman and Superman and DC Universe, and it just doesn't work. Because the characters are not built like people. That's one of the things that Batman and Superman just can't do is that they're not people. And that's part of the reason why Shazam worked is because it came at it from, okay, a reasonable person when gifted with superpowers, this is how they do. And it's like the new Cosmic Kid series, which is the most realistic version of superpowers, except the fact that it keeps surviving. Uh, <laughs> the most realistic depiction of how people would react with superpowers. And so it's it's one of those things that DC doesn't have the chemistry to have its characters act like people. At least for its big three. It just doesn't. And whenever we, we try, you know, the first Wonder Woman, great until the last ten minutes. The second Wonder Woman, moments of greatness. But just... They, their main, their flagship characters aren't able to, they're not human. They're not human on the level of processing trauma like we are. And so when you, if you are damaged, and some of you on here probably super comfortable or not terribly damaged, or if you think you're damaged, you might understand it or not understand it. So I'm not judging anyone, and I'm not saying that one is better than the other, because they're, you know, it's like saying which is better, hot dogs or smorgasbord. Hot dogs are better. <laughs> but I am also think the smorgasbord is gross. I'm sorry, and you're welcome to it. But yeah, it's, it's a matter of taste, and you can't account for taste. So that's my take, and I'm kind of thinking this might be a paper at some point, but uh, Marvel vs. DC... I think it relates to humanity and trauma. And I think it's tied to like the people who are going to better understand something on that second level. Because you can, you know, oh, man flies and that's cool. If you're looking for non-metaphorical storytelling, DC's great. It really is. It's events. The characters are static. Nobody really changes much. You can pick up a Batman right now and not necessarily need to know what's going on other than the splash page. But, you know, in the long term, it's way better when you see, you know, these characters who have changed and grown. And, and that's what Marvel did right. So it's it's about trauma. It's about weakness. you got to build weakness into your characters or there's nothing for them to overcome. And the weakness shouldn't be, oh, Batman decided not to be Batman. You know? 
it. That's just my opinion. Hope you guys are good.